here we go again. Let's get to work. What's up, people? Mr. Toolbox back with another Amazon Lumberyard video. As you can tell from my screen, today is 1.7 day. Yes, Amazon Lumberyard Beta 1.7 is out, and we have a lot to talk about. All right, before the ADD takes over, let's go ahead and do a quick install. I'll cut most of this because it'll be kind of just sit and wait, but there are a few things I want to point out. As always, when you open up the setup, you can choose your installation location. I've got mine selected, so I'll go ahead and click install. I'll get the UAC prompt, you can't see that. Now I'm going to wait for this to finish, so I'll meet you back on the other side. All right, the base setup and download is done. I'm going to click launch and open up the setup assistant. First thing you're bound to notice straight away is that we now have Visual Studio 2015 support. Really, really great. And even cooler is you can select both 2013 and 2015 if you like. I'm going to roll with 2015. I do have it installed. you also notice that over here we don't have install third-party SDKs, either the optional or the required ones. You won't see those in the nav uh, section here until you tick one of the compile boxes up here in the main section. So after I clicked compile the game code, now I see these show up. So I'm going to jump to the install required SDK section. I'm going to click install all. When you do that, you'll see the status changes to downloading and they're going to start. When this was first released, and I mean minutes after it was released, there was apparently a problem with either the uh, CloudFront servers they were using or the, the backend S3 storage, but most of the required SDKs were bombing. I will give a massive shout out to Binky on the Lumberyard forums because he was super responsive and had zips of all the files that we needed to get up and running. So it wasn't a really big deal, but we did spin our gears on it in the Slack community for a bit. That said, Amazon has assured us it's now fixed, so I'm going to let this run and we will see what we get. Sure enough, everything looks good. I've got green checks all around. So I'm really happy to see that. If you do run into any problems getting SDKs installed or getting Lumberyard installed itself, it's probably got to do with the length of your install path. So everywhere from the letter drive you've got it installed on up through the 1.7.0.0, try to keep that under 54 characters. If it's greater than 54 characters, third-party SDKs might break. And if it's greater than 64 characters, Lumberyard itself might not install. So, good rule of thumb, keep that under 54, keep your life simple. I've popped the editor open, and you can tell right off the bat it looks nicer, it looks cleaner, and a lot of what you'll see in the release notes is UX related. So gone are the kind of orange title bars and whatnot, and it's all nice and muted gray, and they've included a new layout. So if you head up to View, Layouts, and flip to the Component Entity Layout, I'm already in it. But you see the roll-up bar is gone. It's actually just docked with the Entity Inspector. Got the Entity Outliner over here, and then the File Browser down here. This is a lot like I actually was working with both 1.5 and 1.6, so I'm glad to see this becoming kind of the default view as the roll-up bar kind of fades into obscurity. If you needed any more indication that the legacy components are on their way out, this is it. So I would get used to this view and get used to component entities because they're both here to stay. One kind of strange thing to note about this layout is the file browser, because another one of the big improvements in 1.7 is the new asset browser. So if we go up to view, open view pane, see there's now two asset browsers. There's the old one and now the preview. And this preview, it looks kind of identical to the file browser, but it's got drag and drop support, and contextual menus and whatnot. So I think what I'll end up doing is probably replacing the file browser with the asset browser preview so I can get used to that. You also notice that the toolbars have been collapsed down into one line. So whereas you used to see the view panes kind of right here, they've now been shoved off over here. And that is thanks to the fact that you can change their size now. So if you come into global preferences, editor settings, and then in, I believe, general settings, You'll see we've got toolbar icon size. We can change that from 16 to 24 to 32. 
It'll change how big those icons are. I like them as small as they can get, so they are out of my way. So I'm going to put them back at 16 and leave them there. I like the look of that better. As has fast become tradition with the new release of Lumberyard, is that I'll go through the release notes and pull out my favorites as far as highlights and whatnot. And the first one that jumped out to me was a line they had in there about Flowgraph, and it says... When you launch the Flowgraph editor, you will now see a dialog that introduces Lumberyard's new visual scripting solution that integrates with the new component entity system. You would not believe how fast I opened up the Flowgraph view pane to check that out. So I opened it up, I saw nothing. Um, so then I decided I would open a Flowgraph and see if it popped up then. And it did. I'll let you read it for yourself, but basically what it boils down to is Amazon said, we have a shiny new ball, but you can't have it yet. Um, I know it asks for patience, but when you're asking for patience from someone who's a technologist or a game developer or developer, full stop, it's, it's just killer. I'm super excited to see what this will be when it, when it is released, um, especially with things like uh, Crytek's schematic out and just... UE's blueprint in general being as robust as they are, I hope it's it's great, and I, I really do think it will be. Um, but when I saw that, I just kind of deflated because I, I want to use it now, of course. But we'll see how this turns out. Once the flow graph heartache subsided, I started taking a peek around. I should mention I'm in the samples project, as you can see down here. One of the new samples is in the samples project. So let's open it up, go to File, New. Open Levels, Open Component Tests, and we'll grab the Spawner Component Script Sample. Click Open, we'll let that load up. Once it's loaded, this is what we'll see, a yellow box. As you can tell over here in the Entity Outliner and just while you're hovering, these are all entities, component entities, so they're really starting to embrace component entities in the examples, which is really good to see. Let's click out here, we'll press Control G, and we'll see what it does. And we can watch this for a while. It's just spawning entities, um, and it's spawning it at random offsets from the spawner location, which is right above this pyramid. This is a pretty simple samples project, but the nice thing about it is that it's built all with component entities and that the scripting is done in Lua. So those of us have been clamoring for Lua scripting examples, especially in the Slack community. We're talking about it nonstop. But we finally have a good example to latch onto as kind of a building block for us. The Entity Outliner makes finding that Lua script pretty easy. So we can see these curly braces right here on the spawner component entity that denotes that it's just got a Lua script attached. So if we click that over on the right hand side in the Entity Inspector, we can see here's the spawner with the dynamic slice spawnable and right below it we've got the Lua script and it is the spawner script. So let's open that sucker up. It won't make you read through this here, but you should read through it just for example's sake. But I have made a couple changes, so let's see what they did. Close up the Lua editor, click out here in the viewport, and I'll press Control G. As you can see, I increased the speed of the sphere generation and also the number of spheres that it'll create. So it's just going to puke out an absurd number of spheres. So a really good practical example of Lua scripting and how to use it and the properties are nicely exposed. You can see if you click the component entity, got the spawn count, the spawn area, the spawn rate, all that stuff exposed as properties from the Lua script. So we can start getting our heads around how to use Lua scripting effectively, especially now that Flowgraph is really on its way out. And the other big new sample is the multiplayer sample. So I'm in the project configurator. I'm going to click multiplayer sample, set as default. I'll launch the editor and I'll meet you back in a second. Funny thing to note, if you happen to have two displays, one of which is set to high DPI and the other set to standard 1080, is if you open the Lumberyard editor and the splash screen renders on your high DPI monitor, the editor is going to render at high DPI too. So I usually run two 4K displays. When I record, I switch one of them to 1080. Uh, I just launched the editor. It happened to launch on my secondary monitor, which is still in 4K. And as you can see, it's a mess. Usually all you have to do to fix that is make sure the editor is on your primary monitor or the 1080 monitor, close it, 
and then reopen it. The splash screen will render on the proper monitor and the editor will render at standard resolution. With the Salvador Dali experience behind us, let's go ahead and click open level. I'm going to open the Ares level and we'll let that load up. You'll see an error report with some particle effects. I think I saw this in the release notes. It's okay to ignore it, won't break anything. So what we've got here is really exciting. It's a multiplayer example built entirely on component entities and grid mate. So it's using Amazon's low latency, high performance networking components for the multiplayer and component entities to build the thing. Let's take a quick peek. I'll click out in the perspective view, press control G. You'll see I'm a spaceship. I can fly around with the WASDA keys, shoot by pressing space. Got a leader score up in the top left corner along with a timer. You've got my score in the bottom right. Pretty nice particle effects. I'm going to crash into an asteroid just to see what happens. Nothing. Okay. When I can shoot him, you see my score tick up. And this has all the code we need for multiplayer. So let's take a look. In the entity outliner, we have a couple of items that have Lua scripts attached that you can take a peek at. One just says test, the other reduces the damage dealt by asteroids. And then all of the rest of these have custom components attached to them. Click add component, you'll see this multiplayer sample section and they have all these components built full of samples worth taking a look at for how to manage both your multiplayer lobby, down to the guns that attach to these ships, the AI, all of that stuff, the HUD. Really, really good examples of how you build components that you can then use in the editor. Now is not the time to start spelunking C++ code, so I'll leave that for later or for your own exploration, but do know that it's there and that you can get a look at how the whole thing is put together with this multiplayer sample. It's all built with component entities, with Lua, with their components, and with Gridmate. Jump back into the samples project, and I'm in the MetaStream sample, because I want to talk about input bindings. So if you have a component entity with an input component on it, you'll see over to the right of the event bindings a little joystick icon. Click that, it'll open the input bindings in the asset editor. You can actually make changes to the key presses or joystick presses, whatever the case is, that make your object do what it does. So I can change the jump. I already did change the jump on this chicken from space to B or change whatever you like in the editor instead of through the text editor like we used to. Now if we enter game mode, I can walk my chicken around with WASDA like usual. But I'm pressing B to jump. If I press space, it's not doing anything. One word of warning with that input bindings editor. If you click the X to close that window, it's been crashing on me all day. It may be specific to me. I get the sense that it's probably not. So make sure you click save and close. Let me just show it off real quick. Don't click up here, but click save and close and Cross your fingers, hopefully that won't crash out. It's a really good advance. I hope it gets a little bit more solid. There have also been some MetaStream updates. I'm going to cover those in an actual MetaStream video, so I won't really mention them here, other than that they do exist. Some other minor stuff that, that bears mentioning is uh, tooltips are now supported in the UI editor, which I think is a great advance. Uh, SSL support in Perforce is finally there. I think a lot of people are ragging on that in the forums. I don't personally use Perforce myself, but that's a great thing to see. I'd, I'd like to see SSL wherever I can. Speaking of, all URLs that, to that point to AWS endpoints now use HTTPS. I didn't know, to be quite frank, that wasn't the case before. I'm glad to see that it is now, but that gives me some pause about what I was doing with Cloud Canvas earlier. I'll have to go back and check on that. Along those same lines, the AWS SDK has been up revved. It's now at 1.0.24, I believe. There have been some major advances in the FBX importer. There are people much better qualified to talk about that than I am, so I'll leave that to them, but I will link the release notes down in the description of this video. But that leads me into the next topic, which is there's still no support for Blender or for the uh, light versions of Maya or 3ds Max, which was kind of a drag. A lot of people 
in our Slack community. We're hoping that would be here in 1.7. A couple of the biggies in the known issues section that bear mentioning. Uh, you can't run, what is it, the game lift gem and the multiplayer gem at the same time. If you do that, you'll crash out your editor, so choose one or the other. Um, and then the other is that the Twitch API is still broken uh, in Lumberyard. So the fix is in the known issues. I'll link to that. Uh, but you do have to rebuild your engine to get Twitch chat play working again. All in all, I'd have to say 1.7 is a good step forward. It's really kind of showing us what Amazon's got in mind for where the engine's going to go. So we're starting to see things like component entity really take center stage. Um, the engine's differentiating itself from CryEngine, and I think that's a good thing. I think we'll hear a lot more at GDC and in the next couple of months about the new stuff coming up as far as what's in preview and what's still not there. And we'll have a really good sense of how we can use the engine. The examples that are popping up are really showing us how to put together full experiences. So instead of figuring out how a component works, we're now starting to put these together into larger levels and into full games. I think it's a really good step forward. Not a groundbreaking one, but a good step forward. I've got my own minor grievances like the high DPI craziness and some stability issues on this release. It's only been out a couple hours, so I'll give it a pass for now. I will run with it and I'll kind of follow up on how it's been going for me through the rest of the videos here. But if you're at all interested, I encourage you to download the engine, join the Lumberyard Slack community. If you have any trouble getting it installed, just want to connect with people who are playing with the engine or actually using it for work. We're growing like gangbusters. I'd love to see more people jump in and start chatting. The link to the community is in the description of this video, as it is every one of my videos. Uh, if there's anything in 1.7 as far as the new features that you want to see covered in more depth, let me know in the comments below or in Slack. Uh, if you have any feedback generally, good, bad, or otherwise, drop in the comments, jump in Slack, yell at me there. Um, as always, do not forget to subscribe. Bye.